الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Dear brothers and sisters, thank you for joining us. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to a new episode of Contemporary Fiqh Issues. We have with us again in the studio today our special guest, Sheikh Asim bin Luqman Al Hakim. Sheikh Asim, welcome. Jazakum Allah khair for having me. Barak Allah fikum. Sheikh Asim is one of the well-known callers and du'aat who has traveled extensively across the world giving da'wah and lectures to Muslims and non-Muslims alike. Sheikh Asim, in the last episode we were discussing the issue of beautification in Islam and you mentioned for us uh, the, issue, the, the hairs, the issue of hair and the categories regarding beautification, that which is permissible, that which is not, and generally it falls under from what we gathered that anything that changes the creation of Allah, unless specifically mentioned by the Qur'an or Sunnah, is impermissible. We were going over the issues of hair that's impermissible to remove for both men and women. We went over the issue of hair that's up to them, and the hair that is obligatory to leave. What about things like extending the hair, like some individuals do they extend their, their hair? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, sallallahu sallam, barak ala abdi wa rasulihi nabiyina Muhammad, the concept of extending the hair is prohibited in Islam. And this is clearly mentioned when the Prophet وسلم, as in the hadith of Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him, said that the Prophet والسلام, has cursed the woman who adds false hair and fixes hair extensions. And he cursed the woman who has this done. And the woman who tattoos and the woman who has this done. And this was reported by Al-Bukhari in the Sahih. So this act calls the curse of Allah the Almighty. And we know that whomever Allah curses, He departs him from Allah's mercy and he would not have him in under his mercy Allah the Almighty. May Allah protect us. There is also another hadith where Humayd ibn Abdurrahman ibn Awf said that Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, may Allah be pleased with him, once gave an oration while he was on the mimbar and he was holding piece of a piece of hair that was seized by one of his guards. And he said to the people, where are your scholars? Where are your scholars? I have heard the Prophet ﷺ say, or forbidden, forbidding this kind of thing, and saying that Bani Israel, the sons of Israel, were destroyed when, they, when their women started to use such things. So such extensions are completely forbidden in Islam. Okay, and would something like, let's say, for example, uh, eyelash extensions be considered as well the same thing? Well, some scholars say that it takes the same ruling because, first of all, it changes the creation of Allah. Mm -hmm. Second of all, it is hair that being extended. And not only this, some scholars even go further to talk about false uh, uh, nails or when they extend the length of the nails and they say that fo it falls under the same category. So that when women wear these false nails or these fake nails, it falls under the same category as uh, hair extensions? Yes, so because it's changing the creation of Allah and at the same time it is extending something that is not there. And it's, it's very awkward why people do this. It's also, in effect, is it not, Ya Shaykh, uh, a contradiction to what the Prophet ﷺ mentioned uh, from the fitrah, from the natural inclination, is for people to cut their nails. We know as Muslims, we do this every week for Jummah. Well, the concept of doing it every week on Friday is not Islamic because there isn't anything in the Sunnah that covers this. Mm -hmm. People do it out of habit, yes. But when you connect this to Friday, it mm -hmm. becomes an innovation. 
We are requested or instructed to remove the nails, providing that they're long. And in the hadith of Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, she said that clipping the nails is part of the fitrah, the nature. And the hadith of Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, he said that the Prophet gave us 40 so days. And this is the maximum. Scholars such as Nawa, Al Imam Al Nawawi, may Allah have mercy on his soul, said that this does not mean that one should wait until 40 days and nights, because this, to some, would have their nails this long. Mm -hmm. But this means that even if your nails do not grow normally, on the 40th day or night, you have to clip your nails, even if they do not grow normally. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, it's the other way around. We find people extending their nails. Or purposely growing them. Yes, and, 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 and this is not only found in, in women. It's also found in men. I've seen a lot of men clipping their nails, but they're keeping this finger, and it's this long. Why, why would they do this? I ask so many of them, and they give me so many lame excuses. Some oh, of them to say clean that... clean the ear. Yes. <laughs> they want... And they'll puncture the, 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 the eardrum, mm -hmm. most likely. Some say we would use it to remove the dandruff, and some said things that I cannot mention here, and it's absurd, it's pathetic. It's disgusting for a man to have such a nail. And to use the nail for such activities. The problem is, now, not only for men, it's also for women. Mm -hmm. And you're finding women prolonging and keeping and growing their nails to horrible lengths. And this is against nature. And this is, now, it's become a habit of the non-Muslims, and so it's forbidden for the Muslim women to be imitating them as no? Even though... Even regardless of yes. the direct rulings. Because we have direct rulings stating that we have to clip the nails. Now, Every women, four, at the maximum of 40 days for men and women. Yes. Now women went the extra mile. So now they're not only prolonging their nails and growing them, they are also putting nail polish on top of them. Mm -hmm. And they, it, it, the, some of them put red nail polish as if they're animals... You know, just... Waiting for their prey. Well, they're not waiting anymore because they have already killed their prey and they have got blood on their nails. No. And it's so strange. I've, I've seen my daughters do this. And I've, mm -hmm. I've spoken to them, some of them, alhamdulillah. Yeah. And one of my daughter puts black nail polish. Like this uh, emo trend. What is this? It, says it's, it looks nice. So anything that looks nice you imitate, don't you have your own personality? Don't you have your own character? Why should we always follow people? I remember one scholar mentioned, he goes, SubhanAllah, are the Muslims just sheep that we just walk behind anyone? Is the Muslim not proud that he is on the face of the earth following the religion that Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth, has set forth for him? Should we not feel honored with that task? Unfortunately, this is the problem. We have people who look down on themselves and they are not that proud. And therefore, whenever they see a new trend, they just follow it. As the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, that the people, the Muslims, will follow the Jews and the Christians, um, uh, even if they went into a hole of um, a lizard, they would follow it. And even, I'm, even amongst the non-Muslims, they know the quote, uh, which is very famous, he who stands for nothing falls for everything. Yes. The Muslims should be standing for Islam, the most, glorif uh, gl uh, the most glorious of things, the truth from Allah, that Allah is one. This, mm -hmm. is, this is true, but unfortunate, it's there. So, going back to our topic, yes. extending the hair is not permissible for women. And as you mentioned... Uh, and uh, also, extending the uh, uh, nails or with false nails or leaving them to grow even past 40 days and also wearing false eyelashes is not permissible in Islam Jazakallah khairan. we mentioned the different types of hair that you can remove and that you have to remove what about people who say I don't want to remove my hair from my armpits every week or every two weeks or what not can I get laser uh, they have now laser surgery which can actually remove the hair and stop it from growing ever again is this considered changing the creation? It's not considered 
changing the creation because you're instructed to remove this hair. So if there's a safe uh, uh, surgical procedure that would result in stopping the hair from growing mm -hmm. and it ha does not have any side effects, mm -hmm. and it, if it does not involve exposing one's most private part mm -hmm. of the body, then it appears to be okay. So, for example, if a woman comes and says, listen, I'd like to permanently remove the hair from my arms. Mm. And or her this, legs. Or, or legs. Yes. And this does not include showing my private parts to anyone. Mm. And it's a female who's doing this procedure. Mm -hmm. And doctors say that there is not a side effect to it because some of these operations may end up in six, seven, ten years' time and the skin would be allergic, it would have lots of side effects. If this is the case, this is completely forbidden. Well, can't we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created humans with a reason that the hair actually grows here and then made it a means of worship by removing it and obeying the Prophet Sallallahu So removing it in one shot, wouldn't that kind of defeat the ajr or the benefits that you can get in removing it every time? It can be, but at the same time, there is nothing to prevent it. And this is why we have to go by the book. The fundamentals we have, the Qur'an and the Sunnah, the, 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 the usul al-fiqh, does not forbid this. So it is too much to be more Roman than the Romans in saying, no, you have to do this, you have to do that. As long as the Sharia ah allows it, alhamdulillah, we give room to the people to breathe. Because we don't want to make the religion too difficult yes. for people. And at the same time, we don't want to make the religion so easy to the extent that it does not become religion anymore. It becomes whims of people and what they desire. Barakallahu feekum, Ya Shaykh, inshallah. We'd like to continue, but just after the break. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Virtues of Ramadan The month of Ramadan is the best month of the entire year according to Islam. It has many virtues that Muslims should benefit from. Do not lose the chance of this blessed month and join Dr. Haytham Al-Haddad in his program Virtues of Ramadan. Ramadan is a very unique opportunity for all of us. It is a very unique occasion for all Muslims all over the world. We are going to discuss certain issues related to Qiyamul Layl and how to observe the night prayer. We are also going to speak about Zakah, insha'Allah. We are going to speak about Sadaqa. Virtues of Ramadan in Ramadan on Hoda TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. For those of you just joining us, we were just discussing the issue of beautification with our special guest, Sheikh Asim bin Luqman al Hakim. Sheikh Asim, you were discussing for us, Barakallahu Fikum, the issue of extending the hairs and how the Prophet specifically forbid it in all its forms. What about this modern phenomenon of people wearing wigs or wearing these, these hats that have these fake braids or fake hairs hanging from them? Okay. Um, I love those hat, these hats. My girls bought them once, and when they put these caps, young girls, they were about six or seven years old, mm -hmm. and they had these fakes, uh, uh, fake braids going on the sides. They looked so beautiful, and I, I, I loved it, but then it clicked and said, oops, this is not right, and I immediately told them to take it off. They didn't like it. They're young, but again... This is religion. We have to follow the Quran and the Sunnah. Mm -hmm. The Prophet ﷺ cursed the women who uh, uh, extend the hair with false extensions. That's really not something we want to be uh, relaxed with. We have to be very careful. The wording of the Prophet ﷺ is very, very specific and very heavy. Yes. Now, one would might argue and say, they were children. 
So Allah will not punish them. Mm -hmm. And the answer is yes, Allah will not punish them for sure. But He will punish me. For allowing it. Yes, because I'm the guardian of the children. So if, my, if I go and, and, and tell my child, here's a cigarette, light it and ha have a few puffs here and there. <laughs> or if I uh, uh, give him champagne to, to drink, He's not sinful. I am. Or even if you see your child reaching for a bottle of chlorine and he's about to drink it and you have the possibility to stop him and you don't. It's the same thing. So this is not permissible in Islam. Likewise, it is not permissible to wear anything that gives the impression that this is hair. Mm -hmm. For example, um, hairdressers, where I come from, women, when they go to weddings they tend to make a trick. So they bring a piece of cloth and they put it on their skull and they cover it with their own hair. Mm -hmm. So it gives the impression that they have thick and big hair. Mm -hmm. This is also considered to be extending the hair. Because and deceiving. Yes, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a form of uh, deceit. Likewise, if they extend the braids with human hair, mm -hmm. but not their own, or with pieces of cloth that would look like hair, but it's not hair. And people would uh, 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 think and be deceived that this is the true length of the hair when they see it. So anything that gives the illusion of hair, but things like ribbons or things like a woman wearing a, a hat or something like that, or a man wearing a hat, these things are uh, allowed. This is definitely allowed. So I'm wearing this scarf, what, they, what we call uh, a gutra. Mm -hmm. A woman is wearing a hijab. Uh, or a scarf on her head. This mm -hmm. is permissible because it's not hair. If a woman braids her hair and puts in between ribbons mm -hmm. with nice colors, yellow, brown, uh, black, whatever, and people can see that these are ribbons. They're it's, not actual hair. They're not actual hair. This is permissible. Going back to your question regarding wearing the wigs. Mm -hmm. Wigs are hair. So whenever you see someone wearing a wig, you would think for that this is actual hair. This is not permissible, but it is permissible in few cases. It is not permissible, for example, for a woman to go wanting to beautify herself. She wears a wig with long hair, with blonde hair, with black hair. Mm -hmm. This is haram. This is forbidden. It's even worse when a man does this. So if we have someone who's like 50 years old or 60 years old who's bald and he wears like a, a, a hair on his, his head and he looks like 20 years younger, this wig is forbidden for him and he's cursed because of it. Well, that's a good point that you mentioned because the Prophet in the Hadith mentioned specifically women. So if a man was doing it, it might even fall under imitating women at the same time, no? Well, if he has a big beard, it wouldn't be <laughs> as, as, as uh, so. But it is not only imitating women, it is the text that the Prophet told us, Asasam, the evidence Asasam. of cursing those who change the creation of Allah. Mm -hmm. And in some courts of law, in some countries, you get even the judge, the lawyers, the, the whole people in, in, the, in the courtyard wearing white wigs. And mm -hmm. this is not uh, it's very proper. common in the uh, past centuries in Europe that the men used to wear these big white wigs for whatever reason I can't imagine <laughs> maybe just to make them look like sheep peaceful <laughs> and fair I don't know but this is not permissible in Islam and it's completely forbidden okay so we've established barakla fikum that wearing a wig takes the same ruling as extending the hair it's a form of deception it's a fake image of hair on the on the individual on most cases in most cases except you said there were some exceptions what would those exceptions be the exception would be when wearing the wig would be a correction of a deformity or of something that is a, a, a defect. So let's say a woman had, uh, and we ask Allah to protect us, had cancer and she had the chemotherapy treatment where she has hair loss and she wants to still be beautiful for her husband and make it easy for him in this hard time as well. This is permissible. Mm -hmm. If a woman becomes bald because of this, this is permissible. If a woman becomes bald due to any other illness, she is like 20, 30, 40 years old, mm. and she becomes bald completely, no hair at all, it is permissible for her to wear a wig because this is a correction 
and she is not changing the creation of Allah. On the contrary, she is restoring mm -hmm. the creation of Allah. Now, there is a hadith which is very important for us to know that a woman came to the Prophet ﷺ and said that my daughter had an illness and now she has thin hair. It's not gone altogether, but it is not as rich and thick as it used to be. Mm -hmm. And she's going to get married. So is it permissible for me to extend her hair? And the Prophet said, no, it's not. Scholars say that because of the extension of the hair falls under the Prophet's cursing. The direct uh, legislation. Y yes, and she had hair. Mm -hmm. Now, the wig is permissible for a woman to wear when the hair is completely gone. Not when her hair is just a bit unsatisfying. Yes, when she's completely bald, as in the case of the chemotherapy or in the case of an illness that causes a woman hair to completely fall. So what about the case of, for example, a, uh, a woman who wants to, who has curly hair and wants to straighten it, or a woman who has straight hair and wants to make it curly? Is this considered changing the creation? No, this is not considered to be changing the creation because it's like wearing your hair, uh, not your hair, of course. <laughs> it's like wearing uh, a, a woman wearing her hair in a different uh, uh, style. She's just changing around how yes, it looks. Yes, and this is not permanent. It goes like three months, or maybe less. But what about some permanent ones, like they have permanent hair straightening uh, techniques? It's, it's nothing wrong in that because fixing the hair is part of the sunnah. It's like combing or brushing yes. it. Yes, so if you have things, chemicals providing that they are not harmful for you. Anything that has side effects or has more disadvantages than the advantages would fall under the category of forbidden things. So what about a woman, for example, uh, coloring her hair? We know that uh, there's Islamic texts that forbid a woman to color her hair black, for example. Perhaps you could expand on that? Well, the text is not for women. It's for men. Mm -hmm. But whatever falls for men falls for women as well. We don't want people to accuse us of segregating in the sense there is segregation in Islam between men and women, but not in discrimination. We're not discriminating. And not in rulings and in legislation. Yeah, the Prophet والسلام, when he conquered Mecca on the eighth year of Hijrah, mm -hmm. Abu Quhafa, may Allah be pleased with him, the father of Abu Bakr, came to the Prophet and he was 80 plus years old. And he was blinded, and he had his hair and beard all white, like Snow White. <laughs> and the Prophet looked at him, alayhi <laughs> and said to his family, change this whiteness and avoid black. So in Islam, it is forbidden to use black to dye your hair or your beard. You can use any other color. But black is forbidden for you to use. So a man could dye his beard blonde if he wants, or his hair blonde. It's true, true. You can do whatever you wish, because this is permissible. You can dye it with black and brown, so it gives us a brownish color. This is permissible. Mm -hmm. Pure black is forbidden in Islam, except mm -hmm. in the case of again a deformity, a case of a defect, a person who is 20 or 25 years old or a girl who is 25 years old, and she has white hair. Would it not still be preferable for her to dye it any other color? Well, she has all the right to dye it in black, because this is her natural color, and she can have this, and this is Islamic. But if someone is about in his 40s, 40s he's got some white hair he, going on. He cannot dye this in black. He has to do it in any other color. Or perhaps, as found in uh, some narrations of the Sunnah, maybe use henna. Henna is definitely the best thing for your hair, you know, scientifically. Mm -hmm. And it's following the sunnah, but... It's natural, it doesn't have chemicals. Yeah, but some people would not like the color. Mm -hmm. If having, you know, your orange beard, and then they say that this is ZZ Top, maybe they won't like this. So yeah. it's up to the people. There are num uh, different kinds of, of henna, mm -hmm. different shades of brown, of, of, of red, or whatever. And you may choose whatever suits you. But there's nothing wrong in keeping a white beard or a white hair, providing it's not completely white. If it's completely white, it's part of the sunnah to change this. Barakallahu and Sheikh. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Unfortunately, we're just about out of time, inshallah. Please join us again next week when we'll continue our discussion on beautification in Islam. 
والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. You can try to hold back the waves, but they will always wash upon your feet. Two waters flow with a barrier in between. The salty sea and rivers fresh and sweet. Everything Allah commands to be will always become a reality. Everything Allah commands to be will always become a reality. Allah, Allah, Allah.